Can you see? It's just, yep, there we go. Okay. Yeah, perfect. I'm okay. just going to mute myself now. Um, so, hi everyone. Um, as Chris says, I'm El Eleanor or Ellie Davis and I work at Pure Happold Engineering. So I'm just going to run through quickly um, a bit about what I do. Um, so what is a structural engineer? What have I been doing so far? And um, how do you become an engineer? So firstly, what is a structural engineer? Well, to start with, it's probably good to understand what a structure is. So structures are all around us and you probably don't even realise most of the time. So if you're sat on a chair at the moment, that's a structure because it holds you off the floor. If you go in a plane, that's a structure because it keeps you um, and, and all the other things in the plane in one place and allows you to fly through the air. A car's a structure, keeps you off the ground. All of the buildings around you that you see all of these things are structures. You can also have temporary structures such as tents, which you can put up and down. Um, so yeah, basically everything around you. Um, so what does a structural engineer do? Well, if we liken it to the human body, um, then all the people on the left play a different part in making sure that the body keeps functioning fit and healthy. So the architect will decide what the body looks like, um, how tall they are, how thin they are, um, whether they've, what colour hair they've got, um, whether it's long or short. The structural engineer will make sure that the person can stand up. So we'll design the skeleton, so the bones that hold your body up. The mechanical engineer will then design the things like muscles that can allow your body to move um, and all the services that, that allow your body to function. So all the blood vessels and the different pumps, so the heart and the lungs to, to keep everything flowing. The electrical engineer will design the brain and the nervous system, so they will make sure that signals are being sent everywhere so that everything's performing as it should. And the quantity surveyor will uh, add everything up at the end and check how many of each things we have um, and check that the cost is about what it should be. So if we put that um, into a building, so um, we design all of the buildings you see around you, a structural engineer will have been involved with. Um, so personally, I do specialise in buildings, but structural engineers can also do bridges, um, railways, all sorts of things. Um, so what's an architect's role if we make it stand up? Well, the architect designs what it looks like, what it feels like. Um, so if, if they want lots of light to come in, they'll want lots of windows. Maybe they'll want it to be tall um, with lots of stories, or maybe they'll want it to be flat and only one story. Whereas the structural engineer will make sure that the building can take all the forces that might act on it. So the one that's acting all the time is gravity. So the reason we all don't fly away is, is, uh, is good for us, but for a building, it means that the quite heavy th things, such as the floors and the roof, are actually suspended away from the ground. Um, and we need to make sure we can get all the weight of those things back down to the ground. Also, the wind, especially if it's a tall building, there's lots of wind acting on the side of a building um, and that will make the building want to turn over, topple. So we have to make sure that we can get that wind down safely to the ground. And then it, in summer it's really hot and in winter it's really cold and that can cause quite a lot of movement in buildings which can cause forces to build up. So we need to make sure we can deal with that. And then if it's a place where there's lots of earthquakes, we also need to try and ensure that if there's an earthquake, um, that our building will remain standing. So we also work with all sorts of other people that I haven't mentioned. So water engineers, for example, at the bottom, they look at flooding and what level we need to put our building at. Um, facade specialists look at the edge of the building and how to make, make it look, look nice. So whether it's stone or whether it's glass. Um, people flow look at how best uh, to model things like railway stations where there's lots of people to ensure there's not bottlenecks like I'm sure you've been in if you're trying to get out through the ticket gate and there's lots of people trying to do the same thing. Um, so how is all that relevant to what I do? Well I got to my um, job now through various different um, experiences which have all been really fun um, and kind of helped shape um, how I think at the moment. So the first of these was at university I worked on a project um, which is based in El Salvador where there's lots of earthquakes. So I was working with a charity on um, a house design and the, the main aim was to make it cheap um, using local materials and make sure it would stay standing up in an earthquake. 
So one of the ways we did this was using bamboo because that's really flexible. So if it, got sh if it gets shaken, then it absorbs a lot of energy. So that's a good thing. Um, so took the wall panel, um, which is bamboo, timber, chicken wire and cement, and then made lots of different test panels like the one on the right and then um, made a shake table to shake it to replicate an earthquake and see how it performed. So, um, yeah, it turned out um, to, we modified the design a bit, but we got it to be able to withstand the earthquakes that are likely to strike. So that was really interesting and it's really good to get hands-on experience um, so to actually be able to put into action um, what you thought of. Um, so then after university, I went to Tanzania. So I led the design and construction of a sewage system. So obviously in England, we're lucky that um, we have toilets and bathrooms everywhere and we don't even think about it. But in many places in the world, people don't have access to clean water and toilets. Um, and this means that it can be um, unclean and people can get ill and things like malaria can flourish if there's um, sewage in the street, like on the left. So we worked with the local community and the local government to to design a sewage system for about 20 houses um, and then we had to build it so it's obviously very challenging it's a big project um, but again it's really interesting and really really rewarding to be able to put your ideas into action and benefit so many people so then I started work so um, as Chris said I work for a company called Bureau Happold um, so we designed lots of big structures you might have heard of, um, like the Millennium Dome or the British Museum. And the one on the right is a really complicated one we've just done in Macau, which is in China. Um, so the first big project I worked on was the new Tottenham Stadium. So you might have seen it in the news recently, it's still not open. <laughs> um, but I worked on the structural design of it, so designing the frame. So you can see on the left, um, they do lots of modelling to look at how it's going to work um, and coordinate it with all the different pipes and things that I said that, for example, the mechanical engineers need to put in um, and all the restaurants and bars and toilets. Um, and then we have to make sure that the elements we've put in um, actually work and stand up. Another thing with Stadia is lots of people jump up when there's a goal and that um, can make the stadium vibrate. So it ha has to do quite a lot of complex analysis um, to check that when it vibrates, it doesn't wobble too much as people could get a bit scared. Um, so on the right, you can see it getting built. So I went to site and I was there for about six months um, watching it, it be built. And again, it's just amazing to be able to see what you've imagined on the left coming to life on the right. So another project on the other end of the scale that um, I was involved in um, was one called the Man Engine. So it was a big, about 12 metre high puppet um, that was taken around Cornwall um, a couple of years ago. Um, so, so it would go around um, on a truck and then it would go in towns and they'd do performances. So it'd stand up, as you can see on the right. And for this, we had to go right down to basics and, um, and analyse, would it fall over in the wind? Um, so you can imagine it's quite tall so it'd get quite a lot of wind acting on it and that might topple over the truck so you had to make sure that there's the right amount of weight in different bits of the structure that that wouldn't happen and also look at the smaller bits the arms and the legs so you can see they, they don't look like there's much holding them up so make sure that that those bars are strong enough to to keep the arms and legs where they should be another project i've worked on um, is in rwanda so another thing we take for granted is bridges. So again, probably where you live, there's loads of bridges over the river or over other roads or railways, and you probably don't even think about it. But in a lot of countries in the world, um, there aren't any bridges over rivers or there aren't for a lot of, lot of the rivers stretch. So to get across the river, people have to walk in it. And that might be okay when it's dry season, but in rainy season and it's flooded, if your school or the hospital or the market's on the other side of the river, um, and you don't have a bridge, then it's very risky to get across. So I helped to, again, work with the locals to, and the local government to build a bridge across a river in Rwanda. Um, again, it's really good chance to, to be able to build something and, and see, see the um, output of what you've designed. Um, that was a couple of years ago. And then you can see the finished bridge. Um, so how did I get to where I am? Well, there's a few different ways to get into engineering. So you're all at school at the moment, and then you probably will do GCSEs. But then after that, the, what I did was I did A-levels, and then I went to university. Um, and then I've worked for a few years 
um, and while I've been working, I've been able to get chartered. So that just says you're a certain standing, standing a bit like a chartered accountant or a lawyer in their profession. Um, but other ways you can get into it is you can do an apprenticeship. Um, so you can start work straight after school. So probably at 16 even. Um, and then while you're working, you can you can also study at the same time and you can learn as well as earn money. Um, and then that might take you a bit longer, but you've started a lot younger and you haven't gone to university. And then you can work your way up to becoming a technician and then an engineer. Um, so there's lots of different ways to become an engineer. And there's lots of different types of engineering as well, which I haven't talked about many of. Um, so, yeah, you see what I did. Um, Again, engineering uh, is a really good opportunity to travel. So I've talked about Tanzania and Rwanda, but also um, I did spend one summer teaching in China. So that was that was amazing as well. So because engineer, engineers are needed all over the world, um, yeah, it's a really great opportunity if you like traveling. Um, so yeah, that's the end of my presentation. Are there any questions? Uh, I need to get back to this page so I can see them. Uh, what did he stop sharing? Mm. Okay. All right, got the questions coming in. Um, why did you make the man engine? Uh, so the man engine, it was the it was an anniversary, I think it was the 100 year anniversary of um, the Cornish mines becoming a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So they wanted to do something to celebrate and to attract tourists to the area. Um, so it was actually a really clever idea. It, it br brought in really big crowds and it actually came south of Bath last year. They've used it a couple of times since. So yeah, I didn't get to see it, which is really sad. I think I was on holiday at the time, um, but I would have liked to see it. It looks really impressive on videos. Um, how did you get selected to make the stadium? Um, so when I first started work, I worked in the, we have a specialist Stadia team in our company who do structural engineering for Stadia. So um, I, I was just in that team and then um, they decide who's going to work on which project. Um, and yeah, I, uh, I worked on that one. There's about 30 of us, so it's quite a lot of people needed. Um, what other types of bridges have you made? Um, so I'm not actually a bridge engineer. I just... I just got involved in, <laughs> in making that bridge, but structural engineering can be applied to all different structures. So it doesn't matter what you specialize in. Um, you can still apply it to other things. What was your favorite project? Um, so I think it's quite cool at the moment to see all the pictures of um, the Tottenham Stadium in the press and, and to know you were there from the start and actually designed it. And, and it's, it's, lots of people know it now is, is pretty cool. Um, but I also, in terms of most rewarding, I think, the sewage system we built in Tanzania just because it had such a big impact on the lives of people there. Uh, what inspired you to become a structural engineer? That's a good question. Uh, so I really liked maths and science and art at school um, but I didn't really know how you could use maths and art at the same time because they didn't seem very similar. Um, so I thought about becoming an architect but then I tried that and I wasn't sure and then a friend a family friend suggested engineering and I tried that and really enjoyed it um, so yeah went from there really um, and yeah so I, I think the best thing about engineering is the fact um, you get to use maths and physics and creativity um, but then you get to see see what you've designed actually come to life which I don't think that is that common um, what materials help the man engine to be successful um, so the man engine was mainly made out of steel um, because it was trying to look like the lifts that used to go down into the mines and the different machines they used. Um, so they were made out of metal, so it was inspired by that. Um, was it hard to make the man? So I wasn't actually involved in, in building that one, um, but I worked closely with the artist who did, um, and they actually had to make a prototype to start with because it was quite complicated with lots of moving parts. They had to see if it would actually work first, so I know it did take a long time. Um, why did you decide to build houses? Well, I think the thing is, it, like, it might sound random, but actually, if you look around you, if you're in a town or a city or even a village, there's structures everywhere, houses, offices, schools, hospitals, um, all sorts of buildings. And, and actually, they have a big impact on how people feel about 
about where they are. Um, so if there's lots of nice buildings, you might enjoy it. But if the buildings are not very well thought about, um, it can it can make the space feel not very not as good. Um, was engineering your dream job? Well, when I was really little, um, I guess I wanted to play some sort of sport or um, maybe a PE teacher. But when yes, yeah, so I didn't really think about engineering until I was like 16 or 17. Um, so yeah, you don't need to <laughs> decide um, on your job when you're only at primary school. But um, I think it, I didn't even know about engineering when I was at primary school. And yeah, it's just a really exciting thing to do. So so yeah, that's why I decided to um, come and talk to you guys today. Um, what would be the ultimate structure you would like to build? Well, I think most structural engineering engineers dream is to build their own house one day. I know a lot of people at our company have, um, but that way you obviously get to actually use the space that you feel. Um, so that's probably a bit boring answer, but probably that. What materials were used to make the bridge? That's a good question. So um, the bridge was really far from a road, so everything had to be carried there by hand. Um, so the bridge itself was made from cables, which are old shipping cables that they used to take things off boats and ports. As, so they were the two, there's four of those, which are the main structure spanning across the river. And then between the cables, there were steel beams. And then the deck is, is wood uh, spanning across. And then um, there's a metal uh, barrier to make sure people don't fall in. Um, and then the towers on each side, um, they're really heavy to make sure the cables stay in place. So they're filled with, um, with lots of stone. And that was the hardest thing to carry because it's so heavy. And that actually took a lot of the time lifting all the stone in because um, we had to make all the cement by hand and move everything by hand, um, which really makes you appreciate in England um, all the machines we have to do things for us. Um, what project will you be working on next? Um, well, currently I'm working on a school, a secondary school, which is in London. Um, so that's going to get start build. They're going to start building that in about four months. Um, I'm also working on another stadium, which I can't tell you which one, unfortunately. Um, and then, uh, what else am I working on? Uh, lots of different things, really. Um, have you ever built a subway system? No, I haven't. That's subway systems are because they're they're normally mostly underground. Um, it requires a bit more detailed understanding of how the ground works and how you're going to support it, as well as build a structure. So. Um, I haven't, I haven't got involved in any of those. Uh, what qualities would you need to become an engineer? Uh, so I'd say you do need to be good at maths and physics um, to be able to understand how, thing, how, how things work, um, how, structure, how beams work and how columns work and things. But you don't need to know what any of those things are. You just need to understand math, uh, maths and physics. Um, and then you do need to be creative because often there's no two buildings the same and often there's all sorts of difficult challenges that come up that you haven't thought about so you need to be able to keep calm and think of lots of um, solutions so engineering is basically problem solving but has there ever been a project that you always wanted to work on but haven't had the chance yet um i guess i would quite like to work on um, a project that was a refurbishment so taking a really old building um and and sort of either changing its use or making it better because that's a quite different challenge because it might have been designed 100 years ago but you don't know how it was designed so you have to sort of assess what's there currently and how you're going to make make it work and make it safe for its new use. Uh, do you need artistic skills to become a structural engineer? So um, you don't need to be able to say draw a person I'm not very good at drawing faces but um, being able to draw out your ideas is really powerful to be able to explain it to other people um, so if I try to describe what I'm seeing out the window to you right now um, it's so it's a car park and there's a school and there's a road and there's a river but you'd have no idea how big or what any of those things look like or where they are next to each other whereas if I just drew you a quick sketch it doesn't have to be like a photo um, but just like where everything's laid out and much quick, more quickly communicate to you. And I could explain where everything was, etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, you don't have to be like the best artist in the world, but to be able to be confident enough to draw your ideas. Um, 
what problems have you had to solve and how did you do this? Um, well, all sorts of problems. <laughs> um, most recently, for example, on site, things always don't happen quite how you design them. So we'll design something and then we'll give it to the builder who has to build it. And if they build it, built it in slightly the wrong place, that can cause problems. So recently uh, with a canopy, so if you go outside a canopy, it protects you from getting rained on. Um, the builder built the support arm of the canopy. Um, he built the thing to connect it to in slightly wrong place. Uh, which meant the arm basically wouldn't fix it, it'd fall to the floor. So I had to figure out how to, su how to support the canopy in a different way. Um, another example is in Tanzania. Um, we didn't, um, so we basically wanted to connect the end of the sewage system into an existing sewage pipe. Um, but when we dug down where the, the government had told us there was, there was a connection point, it didn't exist. Um, and so I had to figure out what to do. Um, so I decided to go back to government and say, look, you said a whole, there's going to be a connection point there and there isn't. What do I do? Can you build us one? Um, and actually they did. So it's not always coming up with a really creative technical solution. Sometimes you need to think a bit broader and think of different approaches to problems. Um, do you have any tips for becoming an engineer? Uh, I think the main thing is, um, yeah, so obviously work hard at school, concentrate, listen to what your teachers say. Um, but the other thing that's also really important is just be be interested in things, be curious about what's around you. Um, how do things work? Why why is the chair you're sat on not falling over? Um, if you, like for example, when I was little, I just used to really enjoy um, making dams on the beach to stop, the, so if there's a stream going down to sea to try and stop it. Um, I had no idea that was anything to do with engineering, but it, all of all of the things involved in damming a stream actually really relevant, like thinking about how dense the sand is, thinking about where you're going to divert the water. Um, and if you if you like building with Lego or anything like that, like being doing practical things um, all helps you to think about how things work. How long did the Tanzania sewage project take? Uh, so I was in Tanzania for eight nine or ten weeks um and that was basically when we got there was when we started engaging with the community and the government so like that was the starting point and then um then we organized everything got building and by the time i left we had the system working and three toilets connected um and then i left two other people in charge uh for another month and then after that there was yeah all the toilets were connected so it was, it was very intense very hard work that's a lot shorter project than we normally do at work because in england you have to get planning permission you have to coordinate with architects and the the person who owns the building and all sorts of different people so normally it'll be a few years um that it takes for a project to finish not not a few weeks what's the most successful material you used uh, so that's an interesting question. So um, there's a few different materials we use regularly. So steel and concrete currently are, re are the most common. Actually, they um, emit a lot of carbon, so they're not very good for the environment. Um, so increasingly now timber is used again, which actually was a really common material in the past um, because it's lighter and it's flexible. Uh, you just have to overcome the fact it's more flammable. Um, so we're trying to use timber more. Um, but what material you choose depends on on what the why you're using it. So, for example, if it's a really tall building, um, then timber wouldn't be useful because it's not strong enough. But if you say you wanted to build another floor on your school, um, it would probably be a really good idea to use timber because it's really lightweight, um, and so you could you could add it to a building without having to make make the existing school bit like bigger and stronger to take it. Um, so it depends on its purpose. I think I've used steel the most because although it does have um, carbon emissions and it, that's not great for the environment, the benefit of steel is that you can recycle it. So you can reuse re reuse beams and columns once the building's taken down and then you can like you recycle paper or, or things at home. You can reuse it, whereas concrete is harder to reuse um, because it's 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 called a composite material so it's got lots of other materials inside it so that's not good um 
do you work with any females? What is the ratio of male to female engineers? Um, so I find increasingly there's more and more females in the construction industry. So I think uh, there's lots of female architects. Um, in my team at work, there's probably a third females, which is really high for engineering. Um, I know in, say, mechanical engineering uh, or electrical engineering, there's a lot less girls. So I think girls must just be more interested in, in structural engineering. Um, but also in our company, there's more senior, um, so people towards the top of the company, managers. Um, there's more female engineers there as well. So it's definitely um, a lot more than there was. I guess the one place there are less females is on site. It seems like that's not as popular for girls. Um, is engineering very competitive? So I think um, engineering, when I applied to uni, wasn't very competitive because I don't think people really knew what it was and um, didn't appreciate how varied it was and all the different opportunities it offered. Um, as I think now people do understand more what it is and how interesting it is. So I think more people are applying now. Um, in terms of getting a job, I think if, if you're good, it's not as competitive as things like medicine or being a lawyer. Um, but it, yeah, I'd say it's at least, at least as challenging. Um, where did you learn how to sketch? Um, I guess I didn't really learn how to sketch. I did art at school and I enjoyed it at GCSE art. Um, and I've always liked drawing. I like I draw birthday cards and things. Um, but I think in terms of sketching, it's just practicing drawing what you see in front of you if you have some spare time. Um, so just looking in your garden, trying to draw things, or or even in your house, like if there's an interesting, maybe in the kitchen, there's there's lots of different things. Um, just having a go and seeing if it looks like what's in front of you. Um, how do you build bridges over water? Um, so there's lots of different ways to build a bridge. It depends how how long the water stretch is. So if it's um, just a few meters, you can maybe just put almost put a plank of wood over, but not necessarily a plank of wood. You can just lift the structure over and be fine. But if the water's a lot longer, then you can't do that because obviously it will just fall in. Um, so for example, with the bridge we built in Rwanda, firstly we sent the cable a smaller cable across. Um, and then we use that to send a bigger cable back. So um, with how far we were doing it, you can just sort of throw the cable over. But if you've got a really long span for a, a massive road bridge in England, um, then you can use a helicopter now to, to take the first cable over. And then you can use that to take other things back. Um, but yeah, big cranes, helicopters, there's all sorts of different ways. Um, but yeah, it's, it is pretty challenging to build big bridges. Um, have you ever built anything on your own? Um, so the yes, yeah, so my university project, I built all of that on my own, um, all the panels to test and the rig. Um, so that's really it was hard work, but it, yeah, it was really really interesting. Um, and then yeah, so dams on the beach, millions of them. <laughs> um, I remember when I was probably ten, built a set of shelves with my dad. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's it's just. Oh, and I've built my beds at home. <laughs> it's quite nice to be putting things up, um, working out how they fit together. Did you ever want to do a different job? Well, when I was, yeah, when I was little, um, would have liked to be at the Olympics or something, but obviously wasn't good enough. Um, but no, I really enjoy sport, so I do a lot, but nowhere nearly good enough. Um, or yeah, I did think about being a teacher, but um, what was your most successful project? Well, I guess it d d depends how you define success. Um, Tottenham's not even open yet, so you can necessarily say that. Um, I'd say that um, the the project in Tanzania and in Rwanda, we both sort of finished on time and within budget and made a big difference to a lot of people's lives. So probably those two. What's your favourite thing you've designed and built? Um, yeah, favourite I'd say is probably Tanzania. Um, what's the longest project to build? Well, definitely Tottenham, it's still going. So we started designing Tottenham probably 12 years ago. Um, we, it started being built, I'd say four years ago, and it's still not open. <laughs> so it's because it's so big and complicated. It takes a lot of time and effort from lots of different people. Um, 
do you have any other engineers in your family? Um, my dad did actually study engineering at university, um, but he did mechanical engineering. So he then went and worked on oil rigs and then he worked uh, for an engine company. And then he now um, does something a bit different. <laughs> he uh, makes, he sells machines that make uh, chocolate and coffee and things like that. So that just shows all the different things you can do. And that's just one person, what they've done with engineering. There's all sorts of different things. Um, who inspired you? Um, well, my dad actually didn't want me to do engineering, so not him. <laughs> but I think I, I did actually read about quite a few different engineers from the past. And um, the, obviously one of the most famous British ones is Brunel, um, who built lots of infrastructure, um, particularly in the southwest near where I live. Um, but there's also a lady who wasn't an engineer, didn't study. Um, she was around in maybe late 1800s, early 1900s, um, Emily, Emily Roebling. And she helped her husband when he got ill, um, when he was building one of the big bridges in New York. And everyone thought she wouldn't be able to help because she didn't know anything. But she basically taught herself engineering. And without her, the project would have stopped before it was anywhere near built. Um, so it just shows if, if you've got determination um, and, and you, you're curious to learn, um, you can actually achieve almost anything. Um, how long did the Salvador project take? So my bit of it was a research um, project on, on the wall construction. So it took, that bit was six months, um, but they did other bits of testing. So for example, on what type of bamboo to use and things. Um, so I'd say um, it's probably a few years in total to get the design finalized. Where do you get your design inspiration? Well, I think it's really good to look all around you. Um, so there's so many different buildings that people have built and some you won't like um, and some you will, but the ones you don't are almost as important because you can try and think what you don't like about them and then do something differently. Um, and then the ones you do like, uh, being an engineer, they're normally ones that, are, that have been quite difficult to build. Um, so again, they can give you ideas of how to overcome some problems. What's the tallest thing you've made? I haven't really worked on many tall buildings, so probably Tottenham, because that's 10 stories high. Um, do you get breaks between projects? Uh, so it depends what projects you work on. So if you work on site um, building things, then you would get a bit of a gap. But because I mainly design things, um, we generally work, we go straight from one project to the other. Unless you want a holiday or something, then you can ask and you can, like one of my friends, he takes two or three months off sometimes between projects, um, just because he likes traveling. Are deadlines ever a problem? Um, yes, yeah, so there's always deadlines to me and, and it can be quite tight, especially because people, the architect or the owner of the building change their minds a lot. And so you have to constantly change your design to, to fit with what they want. Um, so that can create problems. But the, uh, the best idea is to try and plan as well as you can. Um, so that in like at school, so in advance of the deadline, you're working towards it. Um, so you don't just get to the last week and have a panic, but you've steadily made progress. Um, and that's the best strategy. Um, have you ever made flats? Uh, no, I don't think I have worked on anything residential. Um, yeah, our company does quite like a bit more difficult or unusual structures. Um, so we don't do much many residential things. Um, what technology or programs do you use for designing prototypes? Well, technology has been like advanced a lot in the last few years, obviously in everything, but in our job, um, we use, so we use um, analysis packages to sort of model what force, what loads like wind and gravity are acting on buildings and then what forces that causes in the building. Um, but we also use increasingly now programs to, to model what the building might look like earlier on. So we try and write a code to, to sort of take what the architects have given us and then see how we can fit a structure to it. Um, which is really interesting, um, quite different, quite different to what we were doing before. What work ethics are required in engineering? Um, that's a good question. Well, I think in terms of what you need to be like to be in engineering, um, you need communication and teamwork are really important because you work with so many different people. Um, so the plat, like the planning people in the council who will give us permission, then there's the builders who are going to build it. 
and then there's people who are going to supply the materials there's the architects there's the different engineers um there's the end users there's all sorts of people so it's really important to work with people and communicate um, also hard work um, and keeping calm because there's always problems etc um, uh, in terms of ethics in terms of ethical obviously yeah you just need to be really um, honest and and open as with, as with most lines of work I think um, what has been the most challenging project so far um, I think projects are always challenging for different reasons. Um, so I'd say the one I had to work hardest was um, the sewage system because I was in charge of everything, etc. Whereas um, the most challenging, the, like, I guess overall, is is Tottenham because it's so big and involves probably thousands of people in total. So it's coordinating everything is a nightmare, and it's obviously a big structure, um, so it's it's more complicated. Um, is that everything? All the questions I've got. It certainly seems like it. Um, it looks like we had Anstruther and Plasher. I think it's quite, quite a number of schools obviously had to leave earlier. Yeah. Uh, so, Anstruther and Plasher, did, uh, any more questions? Okay. So, what you're going to have to do is put the Another, another wonderful um, presentation. Thank you, Ellie. That's okay. I'll make sure that you oh. do that with those that have this one. Oh, what? Do you uh, sketch up? Do you sketch up? Yeah, we do sometimes at the start of a building to communicate with architects or the overall forms, the overall forms of projects. Um, but later on, we use different, kind of more, more like sketch up, but a bit more advanced. Um, how many years of experience do you have? So I finished. I've been doing engineering for like four and a half years um, and then I studied for four years at university as well so when I was at uni I also worked in the holidays and um, how difficult was it when you started I think a really good thing about engineering is that um, there's everyone's really helpful and friendly so the so although obviously when you start you don't know much compared to everyone else everyone is really willing to help um so actually yeah now i obviously know a lot more what to do in lots of situations but at the start um yeah i felt fine asking everyone for help how long does it take to build a simple small structure um so it probably takes six to nine months to design and then it might take a year to build so probably two years and um, is your life really busy uh well at work currently i'm very busy because <laughs> i'm on about four projects at once but it goes up and down and how busy we are. Um, but I, I think we were quite lucky. Our engineers generally have quite a good work-life balance. So we work from like nine to half five. And then after work, I'll either go see my friends or do sport. And, and we have lots of different sports clubs at lunch. So we go running and play rugby and play football. Um, so yeah, it's probably, it's pretty busy, but in a good way. <laughs> What's the best moment of your career? Um, I think two stand out. One was the, the opening of the sewage system with the, there's a big party with the local government and everyone was there. Um, and then the second was standing on the stand I designed at Tottenham, like very scary thinking thousands of people are gonna be standing on it, but also like really exciting that you designed it and it's now been built. Okay. Is that everyone? Looks like it might be. So, the, any idea when the uh, the new White Hart Lane will open? <laughs> ah, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, <laughs> um, it, it's it's a lot closer now. Um, yeah. yeah. Hopefully by the end of the season. <laughs> <laughs> just when they need it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just for summer. <laughs> yeah. Okay, everybody. Well, thank you all very much. A huge thank you to Ellie. Um, again, another wonderful um, presentation. And thank you to all the schools that um, managed to stay on to the end, and, and obviously to those that, that um, left early as well. Um, oh, oh, thank you, Pasha. And obviously that's great to you, Ellie. So, um, <laughs> I, I think we'll um, we'll close the meeting down now. Um, oh, thanks. <laughs> oh, I think so too. Um, so yeah, we'll we, we'll close the meeting down now and. Um, um, 
Ellen, can you can you come out of your full screen? That's it, brilliant. That, that, that way I can end the meeting. I, I will now end the meeting and, and thank you all very much. And again, please, if anyone has any feedback, please let me know. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye.